Someone just broke Renault's world record. Oh, and we'll talk about blocking the bottom arm and the cut bait cap. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vloggy, where we talk everything pole vault. Little doggy. Commercial time, commercial time. Everybody loves commercial time. Do you want to be a member yeah. of Team Hoot? Head over to team-hoot.com and sign up. It's in the upper right hand corner and then we can be on the same team. Yes. And now for some bad news. Unfortunately, this vlog is going to die in August. We're not really even close to our goal and I don't really see it changing in two weeks, so... I think it's inevitable. The good news is I'm talking to Patreon members right now to see if we can come up with some other idea to maybe keep them going in some other way, shape, or form, but... I don't really know yet. So if you want in on the convo of how to keep these things going, head over to patreon.com slash team hoot and join the conversation. We'll see what we can do. More good news. There's two camps left. I'm actually leaving today. I've already left to Shelbyville, Kentucky, and I will be arrived. I'm probably already there, so you should come too. And next week, there's one in Morberly, Missouri. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I just can't wait. If you're interested, head over to team-hoot.com slash pole vault news, and there are sign-up links to both of these camps, and I would love to see you there. It's my last two camps of the summer, and I am jazzed up about it this jazz hands so here's the outline for the rest of the vlog we'll talk a little bit about the camp we had in cut bank montana a couple weeks ago awesome we'll talk about that bottom arm blocking out what a block out looks like and what a non-block out looks like awesome and we'll talk about the new overall world record because i don't know if Renault holds it anymore by the way these uh stees things they're really good let's cut bank it up don't tell Carrie, my fiance, that I was sleeping with about 12 chicks. Those are peacock eggs. Now, one of the most amazing parts of this camp is we had about 15 pole vaulters. Half of them were at the Glendive camp. So Sean, you're telling me a bunch of pole vaulters drove from one side of Montana to the other side of Montana seven hours across after they did a two-day pole vault camp to do another two-day pole vault camp. That's exactly what I'm saying. So I made sure we gave that group some different tools for that toolbox. Oh, wow, this one works close. moving the arms. This one works on a powerful knee drive. Now I'm not gonna lie, this drill can be really good. But Shane was freaking me out. He is a big dude. Now after that, my old man and I got a tour of the house and we met some new friends. <laughs> Goats, horses, oh bull, bull calf, another horse, more goats, it's a human being. Watch this. Scratching his own head. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> take it off. And we ended the little adventure by having Shane and Andrea take us to a little teaser of what Glacier National Park is all about. And the man of the evening letting us out to go find a parking spot. You. Okay, hold on, man. Okay, you guys vote. Should he buy this jacket? I don't know, I mean, it looks it looks pretty good. High no. five, next. Snail. Oh, she snailed me, guys. She's been snailing me all day. You gotta do a trick. What? Deer nuts, just under the buck. I turned grills on. How's the fudge? It's amazing. Wow. What do you want? Oh, I'm just looking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait it up. Yeah. I'm sure. You're acting way different now that you know that there's a YouTube channel. <laughs> All right. You want to eat? Have we ever read the video? Wait, you guys gotta tell us where we're going. Where, what are we doing here? Hi, Huckleberry ice cream. 
Huckleberry. I don't know what Huckleberry is, so this will be a fun experience. <laughs> what is? What am I? Wait, what am I eating? What are we eating here? I don't know what this is, but it's gonna be awesome. This is this is Huckleberry. Just just learn that. That he painted a fence. <laughs> High heels. I'm aware. You're <laughs> You made it, you're in it, now you're stuck in it forever. <laughs> now what are you gonna do? Huh? 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 Come on, come on, come on, monkey. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. You wanted to be in it, now you're in it. You wanted to be in it, now you gotta be in it. Now, the last day was a little bittersweet. <laughs> Sweet in the fact that I feel like we filled up some toolboxes. You smoked it, dude. The wind just knocked you We out. had a first timer who's never touched a pole before turn into an official pole vaulter. She landed in the pit and did not die. Made it! The only thing that was bitter yeah. about the whole entire thing was that we had to leave. Also, I didn't talk about the shirt, but uh, Andrea gave me this shirt. It's Blue October. And I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love it. Let's talk about blocking out. All right, when I think of blocking out, I think of really one thing. One thing is what I really look for is where the energy is going into the body or if it's not going in the body. I'll show you an example. This is my wall, everybody. Now, a block out to me, I'll use this arm, is if you hit something and it hits you in the shoulder, this is blocking out. Even up here, this can also push in back down into your shoulder. If you have your arm above your head and something hits you, then it's creating a stretch, a stretch reflex. It's doing what your shoulder's supposed to do. Uh, stay there. Mm. Block or the pole bends and it comes up above your head. Make sense? That's really the difference between blocking and how they look different. If you're blocking, it hits you in the shoulder girdle. If your arm's above your head or if you're creating elasticity, good things happen. Now a block is bad for a bunch of reasons. Really the most important is like safety and it's hard to vault on it. Energy is not going where you want it to go. And this event is all about transferring energy into different systems. Body, pull, body. If you're not transferring the energy back into your body at the end, then what's the point, right? It's hard to swing on a block. It's hard to get in the pit on a block. It's hard to pull vault with a block. So don't block. I know the pole will bend a lot, but bending the pole, as if you guys have been watching these a while, just bending the pole isn't always the best. The pole has to bend, move, and then re-put the energy back in your body. If it's just bending a lot, that's just one part of the equation, and no one cares how much you bend the pole. People care how high the bar is when you go over it. It's about as simple as I can make it. Let's talk about the guy who beat Renault's world record. Mm. All right, so the world record is six meters, 16, which is like 20 feet, two inches. And let me double check here for you. 20 feet, two inches. All right, so this guy jumped six, 17, which is 20 feet, two inches and some change. I can't read names and this one's tricky. Bori Baptiste. <laughs> Baptiste. I don't even know if it's bouncy like that. Baptiste. He jumped 616, which is higher than Renault's world record, which means new world record. But wait, Sean, isn't he on an electric skateboard? Yeah, but who cares? He did this in an actual competition with the rules, so it is still the highest a human has ever gone in pole vault competition, which is absolutely nuts. Deer nuts under a buck. <laughs> so how high do you think? But can go. Let me know in the comments below. Rumor has it that he was on 5 meter 30 poles, which are 17.3, 17.4, somewhere around there, which are big sticks. Could you imagine that skateboard gets faster, he gets on some longer poles? Like, ooh, this is like a new sport. Also, a little comment discussion. Is this cheating? Some people have commented to me like, he's cheating, he's cheating, he's got an electric skateboard. Or is he creating a brand new pole vault event and he's just the first person to do it? I don't know, could you imagine like a whole meet with electric skateboard pole vaulting? That would be cool to watch too. All right, 
Let's review some videos. This is a first. We had a lot of video reviews this week, but nobody wanted to be in them. We have a lot of people who are vlog shy, which is okay. I respect your privacy, and I'm not gonna put you in the vlog if you don't wanna be in it. And a special thank you to all the Patreon members. Here are the ones who donated $25 or more, because I said if you do that, you get to be in the credits of every single vlog I make. While the names are flashing across the screen, here are a few things I learned at camp. I do a lot of fist bumps or high fives. I got this one. It's called the jellyfish. This is also called the snowman. When you knock somebody, you go on top, and then you put your other hand on top. I don't have an extra hand to show you. We have a snowman. <laughs> My personal favorite is when you go to high five somebody, you go, hey, high five. And then you give them the knucks and go, turkey, 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 turkey. Or gobble, gobble. I like turkey, turkey. Awesome. With that being said, guys, we have maybe two vlogs left before these are over. So if you want to keep them going, head over to patreon.com slash team hoot and join the discussion. See what we can do to keep these things going because I just can't financially keep them going anymore. So I apologize for not creating more value to make you guys want to keep these things going. I take full blame for that and uh, I don't know what else I can do. So that's where Patreon's coming in right now and hopefully getting a couple ideas. Uh, with that being said, life is meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there. I will see you guys next week.